सो ड्यूरिंग स्कूल एट एयरफोर्स ऑल भारती आई टुक पी सी एम बी ओके सो दोनों ले लिया कि या इंजीनियर बन जाता है डॉक्टर बन जाता कुछ तो बनूंगा कुछ तो बनूंगा जब मैं अपने होटल में ज्वाइन करी थी आई हैव नॉट एंटर्ड इन टू वन फाइव स्टार होटल अच्छा आई हैव नेवर स्टेप इन टू फाइव स्टार कभी नहीं गया कभी नहीं माई पेरेंट्स वो नॉट वेरी वेल्ट वेल्थ डू सो मॉम है टू सेल सम लैंड इन केरला ओह टू मेक अप फोर लाख रुपीज टू सेंड मी टू स्कूल इन स्विटरलैंड Interestingly, I was the only Indian there. Oh, you were the only Indian. Only Indian in that whole village of two thousand people at that time. I come back to India, and I apply for my J one visa. Okay. Three, and that gets rejected. He should be surprised. Three percent. Seven years old, me. I did about six positions, right? Yeah. So it was not time in it. It was happening really quick. Every year you were getting promotion. Yeah. Every year I'm pretty much getting a new role. Yeah. So we weren't starstruck, mm-hmm. right? From the president of the United States to Hollywood stars, it was always yeah. there, right? So, uh, and you had to be not starstruck. So today's episode is focused around loyalty program for hospitality industry. ये topic अभी तक हमने touch नहीं किया और I think इसके ऊपर जानना बहुत ज़रूरी है. Loyalty program is one of the initial uh, stages जो airlines ने शुरू करी थी और एक बहुत important है आज. किसी भी इंडस्ट्री के लिए चाहे वो कोई भी इंडस्ट्री हो एंड जहाँ से ये शुरू हुआ है वो एयरलाइंस और होटल्स ने वहाँ से लिया इन चीज़ों को वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक टू सम वन हुज बीन एसेंशियल फॉर एफ आर होटेल क्रो इन्होंने सबसे पहला आईबीस खोला इंडिया में ये सबसे पहले जीएम थे होटल uh, आईबीस के इंडिया में एंड दिस गाय इज़ नाउ वी पी फॉर एक प्लस we are talking about prashant kumar and he is expert in loyalty program uh, understanding management kaise ye chalta hai and is the vice president for accord plus and today we are going to deep dive into his life achievement or accord plus ke bare mein jitna jaan sakte hai utna janenge and probably this podcast will give us fair amount of idea how loyalty program works for hotel hi prashant Hi Prashant this this is first time happening <laughs> do Prashant bad ke baat karenge okay fine i wanted to start this uh, on a very formal note uh, thank you for the time that you given uh, this is first time that we are going to sit down with someone who is having a background from accor we done with all the other brands as well uh, but with accor there is there is there is this brand that i have not worked with so there is lot that i don't know about this brand already so You are the right person to tell me and educate me about this. Let's start with your journey. How you landed to Accor and your journey. आपने hospitality कैसे शुरू करी और बचपन कैसा रहा and why you are here. So Prashant, I have to start by saying that uh, I'm equally grateful to you. This is my very first podcast. Oh, sir, never had begun a podcast before. I, many interviews, many town halls, but my very first podcast. So thank you, sir, <laughs> sir, uh, for exposing me to this world. I know it takes a lot, so thank you to you and your team for uh, uh, taking today to do this for me. How okay. thank you. I start. I'm a Delhi boy, right? So Delhi me para bada. Went to school at Airfield Abad. Hey, my dad is an IT engineer. Okay. Ah, uh, and mum ke side me everybody is a doctor. So mum wanted me to be a doctor. Okay. So during school at Airfield Abad, I took PCMB. ओके तो दोनों ले लिया कि या या इंजीनियर बन जाते हैं डॉक्टर बन जाते हैं कुछ तो बनूंगा कुछ तो बनूंगा बट एस लाइफ वुड हैव इट प्रशांत दोनों ही नहीं हुआ मैंने आई टी एंट्रेंस दिया रूर्की का एंट्रेंस दिया डी सी ई दिया नहीं हुआ एम्स दिया नहीं हुआ साथ में साथ आई गेव सम चार होटल मैनेजमेंट के एंट्रेंसेस ये ये चीज़ जरूरी होता है ना कहीं नहीं हो रहा तो होटल मैनेजमेंट कर लो ये सब नहीं किया हाँ तो तो ये ऐसे ही हुआ था बिल्कुल ऐसे ही तो ओके And interestingly, I got through all four: Taj, um, ITC, Kamani Palme Thaik, A, IHM, or I got IHM. So got through all. Yeah, IHM. I remember. Yeah. So I got through all of them. Yeah. Uh, but parents' ka pressure tha. Yeah. Ki ab me ko IHM I got in Bangalore. And so in that man, then I thought IHM is the place to go. But then I got Bangalore. Jara to engineering kar le. Crash kore chale jar. So. रिलेटिव वर लाइक अगर वो डेवलपमेंट करेगा तो क्या बाबर्ची बन जाएगा और क्या होगा यही यही सोचते थे तब लोग फास्ट फॉरवर्ड सम ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स प्रशांत आज 
सम ऑफ दोज रिलेटिव ओनली से मेरे नेफ्यू से बात कर ले गिव हिम सम गाइडेंस ऑन व्हाट एल्स एंड हाउ द करियर इन हॉस्पिटैलिटी प्रोग्रेसेस सो यू नो इट्स इंटरेस्टिंग हाउ दिस टाइम हैज ट्रवर्स्ड इन माय लिस्ट बट इट वाज बाय एक्सीडेंट रियली आई थॉट बिकॉज़ आई हैव गॉटन थ्रू ऑल व्हाट एल्स मैनेजमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट्स आई शुड प्रोबब्ली डू दिस आई हैड नो आईडिया बाय एक्सीडेंट आई गॉट हेल्प्स आई थॉट इट प्रोविडेंस I think मेरे को ये लाइन बहुत सबसे सुनने मिली आई एम एक्सीडेंटल रोटेरियर रतन के स्वानी इज एन एक्सीडेंटल रोटेरियर एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर एक्सीडेंटल रोटेरियर द रीजन इज हमारे टाइम पे मैं इसलिए बोल रहा हूँ स्टनिंग बिकॉज वी आर टू ओल्ड टू दिस बट हमारे टाइम पे ये होता था कि अगर आप होटल मैनेजमेंट करने जा रहे हो विच मीन्स इधर यू विल बिकम अ वेटर और यहाँ पर खाना बनाने के कुक बनोगे दिस वॉज दी थाट और सबसे लास्ट ऑप्शन होता था होटल मैनेजमेंट करने का बट We'll talk about this on 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 a different way. Abhi, in this podcast, man, that that situation and today's situation different. Not that people hotel management are coming back. That people are not joining. Those who have no option, they are trying to go. But when you have started hotel management, when there was no option, when you went there, then what was it? How it was like? So I never loved the feeling of being there. Yeah. 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 I have never stepped into five star. Kabi nahi gaya. Kabi nahi. So, pehli baar was I didn't know ODC at Taj West End. Yes. In Bangalore. So, okay. you know, they would get uh, from hotel management graduates first, second year, first year, and uh, shadi mein you do an ODC and outdoor catering. Yeah, ha, yeah, exactly. Outdoor catering. So that was the first time I entered a five star hotel. Okay. And what I loved about this industry from the very beginning. is that it taught me about life her right so it was an industry that was teaching me how to manage people's life mm. not their life in a three square feet space mm. but their life in general what they eat what they wear Correct. how they sleep how they breathe her all of it right so i think i i fell in love with it at that time when i was doing my hotel management uh in bangalore in the you know those early days so college khatam hotel shuru to wo zindagi kaise lagi because padhai ke time pe to har koi sochta hai iske baad naukri lagegi aur bahut acha hoga so every everyone's team is that i will get into a five star hotel and life is going to be good because everything looks very glamorous and that was my my way also to look at the hotel unless i get caught into it i my my life was different with the hotel uh, than yours mm. but of course for sure that it is glamour that attracts you a lot सो जब होटल में पहुंचे क्योंकि ग्लैमर तो बाहर से दिखता है पीछे बहुत कुछ डिफरेंट होता है ना विद विद 40 50 पीपल हैव ऑलरेडी स्पोकन टू ऑन द पॉडकास्ट आई नो व्हाट इट गोस बिहाइंड ऑफ मेकिंग अ ट्रू होटल इंडिया व्हाट वाज योर हार्डशिप इन टू होटल मैनेजमेंट सो यू नो द फेलियर वाज नॉट गेटिंग इनटू इंजीनियरिंग एंड या मेडिकल एज अ टोल दैट वाज ऑलरेडी देयर या हैड एंड देन द नेक्स्ट फेलियर एज अ ग्रेजुएटेड वाज नॉट गेटिंग थ्रू ओसीएलडी और और मैनेजमेंट ट्रेनिंग ऑफ ताज because everybody wanted uh how you see sub yeah management training yeah. correct so i didn't get through that also leela ka the management training ek program nahi tha at us time nahi tha so uh, so these are the two that i had ranked as number 1 and one yes uh, and then get three the one other so um, there was another failure it was a big hit and i got through an hd program which is uh, um not the mt program but an hd program that with hmm. much but the jo bacha kuch hai हाँ सो एंड दैट टाइम प्रशांत वॉट हैपन वॉज आई थॉट आई वॉन्ट टू मेक अ डिफरेंस राइट इन दिस इंडस्ट्री आई एंजॉय दिस इंडस्ट्री सो दे वॉज दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ अ स्विज होटल मैनेजमेंट स्कूल वाइडिंग अ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिप्लोमा इन होटल ओके होटल मैनेजमेंट माई पेरेंट्स वॉट वेरी वेल टू वेल टू डू एज एन एवर एंटर फाइव स्टार होटल So mom had to sell some land in Kerala, oh, uh, to make up four lakh rupees to send me to school uh, in Switzerland. And they are one; they are the one who wanted you to do engineering or do MBBS, and now they are supporting you. They are fully on my side. Yeah. Okay. That's how parents are now. Yeah. Yeah. Come around ultimately. Yeah. Bacha bacha yoga. Right. So, uh, anyway, so then um, now the four lakhs paid for. the tuition fees which was actually 6 lakh but i got a 2 lakh scholarship are you getting a scholarship i got a, i got a scholarship you had to apply for a few things and um, and you got that so that's how i went to switch now to live there you needed money of course uh, so 
I started working part time in a restaurant. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's how I run my expenses while I was in Switzerland. All was great one and a half years. Never stepped out of India. Never got on to my second flight in my life. Wow. Uh, right then. And that to an international flight. Yes. Uh, I think feeling very fortunate at that time that I, that parents could do that for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that changed many things. Right? I got exposed to uh, a new country. Uh, saw snow for the first time. Wow. Started skiing. Um, also, a question came in my mind, Prashant, that why is Swiss hospitality known? For the hospitality. Yeah. And why not Indian hospitality? Yeah. Because, you know, we're very hospitable parents, right? I mean, right. If you look at the Indian cohort, yeah, one of the most hospitable. Atiti, Dev, Spanabar. Yeah, right, it's, it's ingrained in our blood. Yeah. But then the world knows Swiss hospitality. Correct. Much like German cars. Yes. Uh, French perfumes. Sure. You know, uh, Italian fabrics. Correct. Uh, and I thought, why not Indian hospitality? It's something that stuck with you mm. there. So it was quite interesting. Um, after that, um, I worked in Davos, um, which is where the World Economic Forum is headed. Um, interestingly, I was the only Indian there. So you were the only Indian? Only Indian in that whole village of 2,000 people at that time. And this was which year? This is 1999. Okay. So I was a station waiter. That was my mm. first job, if you will. Um, I was interested in F&B, food and beverage, but service. Mm. Um, so my first job was a waiter in a Chinese restaurant. Uh, and most of the uh, staff and my team members were Chinese, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, so I had two choices at that time, either to speak Mandarin <laughs> or learn German. Yeah. Uh, and just to go backwards a tad bit, you know, Switzerland has four languages, right? Correct. It's called German, Italian, French, and Romanish. So I studied in the French part, mm -hmm. but I worked in the German part. So, uh, okay. So... At that Chinese restaurant, I thought maybe German is where. So this is where I started picking up my German. How many languages you know? Uh, I speak a bit of French, some German, uh, conversational German, uh, Malayalam, English, Hindi. And these all because of the part of the work that you have done? Yes, correct. Okay. So much more than I'm in some okay. sense, right? So it's so, something that... Uh, so, I mean, so German was the thing that you learned? Not the Mandarin. Mandarin was a difficult one. Yeah, Mandarin. <laughs> so, just like ski, uh, because we, there was so much snow. Uh, there was a Greek friend of mine who taught me how to um, ski. There was a Chinese friend of mine, and she taught me German. Okay. Chinese friend taught you German? German. Okay. Straight. So, um, and then the school was really focused on placing its students. Mm. So, um, shh, I got a job offer in Denver. Okay. In the US. Yes. Now, internet wasn't as... Yeah, that back then. It was not... It was that great. Yeah. I mean, it was you to dial through a modern... Correct. Goes. Correct. Um, and it was not... There was no buoy around it. Mm. Right? So, so I misspelled Denver as Denver. Oh, you took the wrong flight. No, no. I didn't. I, I thought I was going to Denver, which is a uh, a city in upstate New York. Oh. Not in Colorado. Right? Okay. So, that's how lame I was. But anyways, I... I got the job in housekeeping. Mm. So they were looking for a management trainee mm. uh, in housekeeping. And I applied for that and the camp said it to us and I got that job. Now I come back to India um, and I apply for my J-1 visa. Okay. Then, and that gets rejected. <laughs> you should be surprised. Fine. So you, you came back from, so being in Switzerland, you applied for a job, you got in Denver, US, and then you came back to apply a visa for it. The rule was at that time, Prashant, that you have to apply for your U.S. visa from your home country. Home country, yes, of course. So, which is why I came back to India. And it got cancelled. Yeah, and they rejected my visa, right? So now, I think, and you had to now wait for two, three months to apply again. Hmm. Uh, and while waiting, I picked up a job with uh, IBM Daksh at that time. Yeah, so, that was huge at that time. I remember a lot of my friends also worked there. Yeah, so I just thought, like, you know, I'm waiting here for a visa to come through. So what do I do? So I, I picked up that job. A uh, lot we hold in, but uh, the third try I got through three times as a job, mm. it was for me. The second time I got rejected again. Mm. And the third time is the last time you can apply. Okay. Uh, I was grateful that the hotel still waited for me and still took me. Okay. So Good. I spent the next seven years in the U.S. in Denver, Colorado. Okay. 
uh, started in housekeeping. So uh, as a management trainee, essentially you're a supervisor. Uh, I, most of the team members were from uh, Mexico mm. or South America. Yeah. So I picked up a little bit of Spanish also. Mm. Uh, uh, and when they would call off sick, you'd be, you know, cleaning toilets and making beds and all this stuff. So um, I, you know, the ladies could do approximately 12 rooms a day. Mm. My capacity was about eight rooms a day. So I was a bit slow because they were a lot faster than anything. Yeah. Uh, and so housekeeping, they promoted me to assistant uh, manager in housekeeping, sponsored my H1B. Uh, okay. uh, um, this was a year and a half later when the visa got over. Um, and then I moved to something called a motor lobby manager, which is basically valet parking. Mm. Two million dollar business. Correct. So, not. so that's something that I did for about a year. Um, so I'm just taking you through those seven years at the Brown Palace. Uh, the assistant front office manager, night manager, front office manager, then director of front office operations. Those are all the things I did. And these were all in Denver? All in Denver at the Brown Palace Hotel and Spa, mm -hmm. which is really an autograph collection by Marriott today. I know. And I also, I've also gone through your profile to know that you got appreciation from White House twice. Yeah, so while I was there, the president um, of the U.S. stayed with us. And then you had to be FBI cleared yes. uh, to be able to, you know, serve them. Protocol, protocol has to make it. So I was very, very fortunate. Uh, every president of the United States actually stayed at the Brown Palace Hotel. Mm -hmm. We were there. It was the only four-star, four-diamond hotel in Denver at that time. Yeah. So, uh, again, very, very fortunate. Uh, um, the only Indian boy, if you will, in that hotel. Yeah. Right? So quite unique. And, and so all the seven years, you were the only Indian person there. There were some who came and went, right. but I was the only one who was there. Straight. Um, on all throughout. Yes. So, so. And then U.S. chapter, how how does that U.S. chapter close for you? So then Prashant, um, seven years is, you know, seven year itch, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there are seven vows, there are seven uh, <laughs> commitments, all of that, right? So yeah, I had the seven year itch, I guess, in Denver. And then my boss then moved to Los Angeles. Okay, so before we go ahead, I just wanted to ask one thing here. No. In this seven years, were you planning anything or life, life was happening to you? So now you have a career, you have came out of college, you have got a job, you got a job, you got a job, now your family is pretty much okay and happy with you that you're doing something in your life. Are you also thinking while you're working in uh, in US, that you have to do something in life, you have to do something, so there was a promotion happening with you. Wo promotions kabhi soche the, plan kare the, or life was just happening down with you? No, nee, Prashant, in seven years, I did about six positions, right? Yeah. So, it was not time. Hi nahi tha. It was happening really quick. Every year, you were getting promotions. Yeah, tha. every year, I'm pretty much getting a new role. Yeah. Um, I was working very hard, I must tell you that. And that's why, that's why the result coming in. Yeah. There's no... As, as you, know, there's, you know, I hear people saying, you work smart. I think there's no such thing. Yeah. This. It's hard work, right? So, and it's not even just hard work. It's about being devoted to something. Yes. And when I say de devotion, most people think either religious or no, no. spiritual. Yeah. But if you want to achieve anything, even this relationship you want to build, yeah. you have to be devoted to it. Yeah, of course. I have to be fully aware that w what we are getting. Nice cup of coffee, yeah. you have to be devoted to it. Yes. I, I know how devoted your team was to set up this podcast. <laughs> So if you want to do something well, you've got to be devoted to it. Yeah. So that's something I did throughout those seven years. So I didn't say, I wouldn't say Prashant, that came easy. Yeah. Right? Because I was devoted. I was grateful that I was devoted because I enjoyed the industry. Yeah. Right? So I, I understood that. But the point is, see, I'll tell you, while I was working, oh. I was 100% devoted, but I wanted to know what my result of the devotion would be. And most of the, most of the time, <laughs> that I spoke to people, they were, they were saying that I was doing my job, result came in. So, I don't do the old words, you don't do the old words, but I don't know if I will get the old words. So, for you, life was really quick. Six promotions happening again and again. And, and you knew that the, the crux of the story is that I am doing hard work, I am putting my 100% and the result is coming by itself. So, which means things were happening for you. Hmm. rather than you stepping back and saying that this should happen in this way ya fir ye aisa hona chahiye tha so i will i will come to that part and this this is going to happen in your life where where you will take control and i'm sure that with this entire end of the podcast we'll find out where it happened so okay after 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 us and you just touched on something which is very dear to my heart if you <laughs> allow me can i yes please 
see it touched upon karmanaya vadikara thing ma phalesh kadachana correct right so uh that's something i really really love and i have it's very very dear to my heart today mm. right at that time I was a young guy but bed behind my ears didn't really know much in life so the literal translation of that is karm pe aapka haq hai correct result pe aapka haq nahi nahi hai so and you also answer that by saying that without wanting a result you can't do anything right correct so every conversation every action has a result in mind exactly otherwise good very good blood if even if you don't have a control you want result out of it yes so in my case i was lucky um, as i said i was quite dumb i didn't really know what i was doing just working really hard at whatever was given to me but my bosses hmm. noticed me and through every they like, provided you interview for this role and interview for that role and they got yeah. so that's how it kind of just happened so i always have somebody taking care of me whether it's sally grove um john chaser you know armen these are the name who made you so who helped you to grow all of this so they constantly said when do you apply for that when do you apply for that and and i just get uh, you know debra um so all of these people that kind of anisha wiley they kind of almost carried me through if you will yeah this is this is the result when you put your uh, i'll come back to the same the devotion is there and people are watching your devotion and that they will help you so when is that so after after 7 year why you left to us so after denver i went to los angeles for well, that just yes. happened right so um i went there because i got a role as a director of ops uh director of rooms then director of ops cops so really the number two of the hotel at the 2 ic uh and los angeles was yeah los angeles was there and los angeles had been there a few times but i thought uh this hotel was at the cusp of beverly hills wow. and hollywood wow no it's just called the small area of west hollywood okay so Paris Sultan would get a haircut at my hotel. Wow. Uh mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Bruce Willis was there at the bar all the time. Tom and Katie were at the at the bar all the time. So we were not star struck. Mm-hmm. Right from the president of the United States to Hollywood stars, it was always yeah. there, right? So and you had to be not star struck, right? Mm-hmm. And it was the requirement to of course these hotels, to, uh, you know. I remember Rihanna did her first uh, photo shoot at uh, our hotel. Wow. In our hotel on the rooftop, right? So So yeah these things were happening so uh I would just wanted to grow my career just you know uh, like a young boy I thought okay I get to be the 2 IC of a hotel in Los Angeles uh in Beverly Hills West Hollywood so I took that role uh I had decided by then Prashant that I never would come back to India okay I wanted you know I had this passport with the with a lion on it I wanted an eagle it is so bad because the passport colors are saying blue right? yeah uh and i was doing very well you know at that hotel the hotel was going to get renovated and become london la how and and dad had a quadruple bypass okay right it was all of a sudden um i have a sibling even really touched that but i have a sibling a younger brother and who moved, moved to australia so i was in los angeles and he was in melbourne oh um so he took a sabbatical came back to india to care of dad and mom for some time and i thought uh i want to move closer to it but never to india right unless we got a green card at the time yeah so so you had the green card i just got a thing oh, oh, wow. in la i got a green card so i thought oh maybe i should go to um dubai or you know singapore or somewhere which is 4 or 5 hours from india i could still travel you know so i started applying saying how can i come closer to this part of the world and what was your age age then I was uh this is 2004 so approximately about 26 oh okay so at 26 you were seeing a lot of things in your life okay good so then uh I came back um that's when I moved back to India um so you didn't got any options and you 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 how was it to leave a green card behind and come back to india so when i left the green card behind i had a job offer uh with one of my uh, ex bosses sally grove who i mentioned I was working for windham she still works for windham she was a regional vice president of windham and she said why don't you join us in um, in las vegas so i always thought like maybe that's an opportunity for me right mm. so if i don't like it anywhere else i'll just go back there as i said i never wanted to come to india mm. so i applied for a job through hvs in moscow 
Okay. Yes. So that's the job that I applied for. Mm. Now, HBS had just started up their setup in India. Mm. And they recommended me to Accor's first hotel in Hyderabad. Yeah, convention one. Yeah. The of Hyderabad. Convention. Such a no hotel convention center. Correct. Correct. So it was India's largest convention center. Correct. 188 keys. Very large hotel. Accor's first entity. So when they sent my resume there, I had a couple of interviews. Um, so there were two GMs I was going to report into. So it was also a number two role as a resident manager. Hmm. Uh, Phil and 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 Will. Uh, Will was from the US, from LA, and Phil was from Sydney. So they both interviewed me. It was all um, online. And they wanted me there. Uh, I looked at the salary package. And, you know, and I had this old Indian computing in my head. Correct. Like my brother still does, right? <laughs> so I'll come to that in a bit because it's very interesting, right? So I thought, oh, wow, you're going to pay me so much in India. Oh, right. Like, so uh, I thought this is great. So Hyderabad, let me try Hyderabad. Why not? Right. I have a green card. Every six months I'll go back. Huh. Uh, right. So I keep my green card alive. Correct. Then I'll take it. So that's how I came to Hyderabad. Mm. That's what got me to India. Uh, when I come here, you know, I remember my grandfather was in politics. Mm. Uh, he was part of the freedom struggle and then Janta Dal. Okay. So, Janta Dal. Janta Dal. so because of him, we got our landline connection in about three years, Delhi. Where was time for seven years waiting? Seven years waiting to get a landline connection. So we were very happy. Neighbors line karte the ki hamari. Very call guys, ding call aari, steady call aari hai, book kar liye hai, toh aap, hamare latest phone karein hai na. So they would line up outside the, our house. Mm-hmm. Now I come back to Hyderabad, fast forward about, you know, 10 years there. Mm-hmm. And I come back to uh, Hyderabad, I have the same internet connection that I had in LA. Oh. I had a set of wheels in six days. Fair. So I thought maybe this is my calling. India is growing. Yeah, India is really growing, right? India is going west. I came from the west. Correct. Correct. Maybe this is my calling. This is the f- perfect marriage. Right? And at that time, I learned, Prashant, that you should never say never. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes life has a better plan for you than you have for life. Yes. So, that's kind of the journey back to India, right? And then... Uh, I think one, one thing that you missed out here is... That if you if you are fully aware of what is happening, you take the best advantage of the chance that God gives you. Even if the life has a plan for you, some people fail to see it. You didn't. So, okay. So, you were here. Hyderabad was your first India gig that you started. With for a French company, yes. Yes. And from oh. there, from there, you never left a car, right? No, from there, um, I worked for Accor for about six years. Yeah. Um, was an Accor GM for, in the open different hotels for them. Um, three in India and one in New Zealand. So once you were here in India, then what was your action plan that do I have to grow in hospitality? Where you want to go? What? So you, you became a GM as well. So was there in your head that, okay, I have to grow as a GM and continue being a GM or the corporate office was there in your head? Then take me through the India journey for few years. Sure. So initially, the relationship with hospitality was an arranged marriage. Oh, yeah. Right? After that, love marriage. Ho. Correct. Right? So once I did my hotel management, it was a love marriage. Mm. Now I was clear that this is the industry I want to be in. Right? So never had any doubts about it. So I wanted to grow in this industry. Uh, Prashant, also, I didn't have a very long-term vision in that time. Mm. A lot younger, right? Mm. So I didn't think that far. So I always wanted my next goal. Mm. Right. So I moved from, as I said, from a director of front office operations to number two. Then when I was a number two at Hyderabad, I wanted to be a GM. Right. Um, I remember interviewing with the CEO at that time, Michael Eisenberg, uh, for the IBIS uh, board It was India's first IBIS yeah. uh, in 2008. And I didn't really want to work for an IBIS. Mm, that was a small order for you. Well, because, again, you know only what you know. Yeah. Right. You don't know what you don't know. Correct. So I never worked for anything but five-star luxury, Correct. president of the United States, you know, Paris, Hilton, those, everything was, you know, larger than life, if yeah. you will, right? Uh, the chopper was landing at 
HICC no hotel and the president was coming there. There was a Pravasi Bhaz, there was right massive conventions. We did a New Year's party with FTV with 8,000 people, right? So everything was larger than life, correct? So now to say, go run an IBIS, so, you know, yeah, the GM role, but you know, I just thought, so I asked for some obscene salary at the time. And they agreed. They said, okay. And then the CEO interviewed me and the CEO said to me that, this was Michael Eisenberg, and he said to me, Prashant, if you want to be successful in Accord, you have to do at least two brands and two countries. Yeah. Right. Now, I wasn't very smart at all, Prashant. But I was smart enough to know that when the CEO says that you should do something, <laughs> either you do that or you look for another job. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I took that job. Right. And then I realized that being a GM was very different yeah. from being a number two, right? It's like almost like this blanket cover is mm -hmm. gone. Correct. Right. So it was you were exposed. exposed. Yeah. And I was running the IBIS. Uh, it was a I learned more of the IBIS in one and a half months mm. than I did in one and a half years of the Nova Talent. And that's this is first IBIS. First IBIS in India, right? Remember those times in India we had five star hotels with fountains in the lobby. Yes. The Oberoi's, the Moria's, the ITC's, the the Taj's, right? Or you had guest houses with roaches in them. Mm. I I have a five-star hotel, three-star, four-star, So that was a massive challenge. It goes, not customer, not staff. So I didn't have a team that would want to join me. Mm. I didn't have any customers who wanted to stay. Correct. So that was the biggest challenge, right? So I, as I said, it, I learned a lot, right? So create a brand new sense of hospitality. That space of economy... Hotels did not exist. IBIS actually created economy hotels in India. Why are you are you some someone who has seen a lot in in this space altogether? Because people today will not realize that a economy hotel bechna kitna mushkil tha kyunki aapne khud bolaya main kyu join karunga IBIS? Me ko to five star chahiye aur us samay har kisi ka mindset tha hotel ka matlab five star otherwise aap dabey pe kam karo. Sirf ne So so ab Tell me the challenges. How you how you have you overcome uh, all of these challenges? So I'll give you a small example. Um, most time pe, so uh, you know our CSAT. Uh, you know we had different ways of uh, yeah. measuring uh, um, uh, customer satisfaction. Our breakfast satisfaction was sitting at about I think sixty percent. Yeah. And I got a standard eighty percent one Eighty percent is the minimum. Correct. Now the breakfast was set up where we had three live stations, mm -hmm. and so. One of the live stations is a omelette dish. Hey, simple. Uh, but you, it said make your own omelette. Okay. Right. So which means that you could pick your peppers, you could yeah. pick your mushrooms, your cheese, uh, onions, etc. Right, ham if you wanted that. And there was a chef behind, and he would mix that up and, and make it for you. You make it for you, and you just take a table number with you. And that's going to deliver. So we were doing a lot for breakfast and we were scoring 60%. You know, it didn't make any sense to me. And I was challenged, right? Um, then you know, a lot of board meetings happening at the time. It was Accor's first investment in India as well. Wow. So Accor owns uh, the brick mortar and the hotel along with our partner, Interglobe, right? Just the land was not Accor's. I mean, we, we are a partner in the cool hotel. Oh. So the land, the brick mortar, all of it. Yeah. We still, even today, we own part own the Accor, uh, the IBIS portfolio mm. with Interglo. It's fully owned, really. So, you know, there were board meetings and people were struggling on what IBIS India is. So I remember one of the board meetings, I had a meeting and I said um, to them that I don't know what IBIS India is. And because they would be throwing numbers at me saying, you know, your productivity should be this, a manning ratio should be this, and so on and so forth. So I stood up and said, I don't know what IBIS India is. So my boss and John Michel can say, he used to head Accor India. He said to me, Shant, you've said this now, never say this again. Because if anybody in this room knows what I, IBIS India is, it's you. Yeah. Right? And that was a lesson for me, Prashant. I grew up that day. And I decided I'm going to do something about this 60% seaside, right? So I called my executive chef. He was from Taj. Um, I called my f &B director. He was from Hyatt at that time. Because this is where... Yeah, of course you'll get from, right? Uh, and I said to them, from now on, we are going to do only two kinds of omelets. Right? So, a masala omelet and a plain omelet. Wow. So, the chef and they have me tell boss, you have to do your job. Where is 60% of 
आप ये भी कर दोगे तो वो तो पचास परसेंट हो गया सो वी विल ऑल लूज आर जॉब्स मैंने करके देखते हैं सो वी सेट पिक योर ऑमलेट बेसिकली मसाला ऑमलेट और प्लेन ऑमलेट करेक्ट चॉइस कम कर दिया चॉइस कम कर दी and then we said to uh, then i called uh, my executive chef and i said to him that you know if somebody wants something different they will tell you yes don't say no right and i called the fmb director and i said the guy said if somebody comes to you so one of the uh, customers want a an onion free or you know something yeah. special don't say yes but don't say no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. say that let me check with the chef and if the chef says yes then do it mm. okay like right. this is one one change i made right and three months prashant the c side was 82% so i learned that customer service doesn't happen at delivery mm. it happens at the time of picture painting correct what people expect right because i learned from mcdonalds was very big in the US even today the world's largest franchise it wasn't very big in India that time but i learned that nobody complains about a burger right correct no because they never say it's the juiciest burger mm. every mcdonalds on the planet tells you they give you good value for money and yeah. they deliver that every single time yes right so consistent on that right they don't say they have the best burger yes yeah and therefore customer satisfaction stays well right because they know exactly what they're going to deliver every day correct so i learned from them that's a great example i so i may i'm we may go on because you will have a lot of examples that you have said in so i this was a challenging role for you this is the first time that you had something which was out of your knowledge so there was a lot of learning what all happened after this okay so after i this uh, there was i this mumbai airport uh there was a different it's an airport order so it is it is safe to say that you are the first general manager ibis ever had in india right yes correct yes and you are that was the first ibis of india yes wow okay and then uh, ibis delhi airport this one this, yeah. um very very safe state okay. yeah. and then um by the time i got bored right so i had answered my pants I, as i said i always was eyeing what's next yes. to answer your first question right so So I went to my boss and said, "What next? I'm bored." So this is the first time that you have to reach out. That people were not thinking about. But they may be thinking, but you, you, yeah. you lost your patience. I said, "Okay, let me take the control." Here you took the control. Yes. So you're absolutely right. Okay. You know, in life, Vishal, right? Different skills are needed to succeed at different levels. I truly believe this. Right. So I realized. that skill of depending on your bosses to guide you yeah that rope has run out hey. so you you reach to some level and then say that i have to learn next thing otherwise you gone stagnant at that part yes so you have to learn something new from there and sometimes learning doesn't come from someone else who will come and guide you you have to take it for your own self so you have to open the book and read it yes. so you reach out to your boss yes at 29 i was a gm of ibis gurgaon mm-hmm. that was service one of the youngest gms at that time a uh, definitely not call and you were married that then yes i was married then. oh so you started the life as well yes so we'll come to that part in time yes we'll come to that uh, because it's it's a bit of a different journey there are a lot of learnings there as well yes of course and continues to be um so i went to my boss and said you know i want to do something different and so he said okay there's an opportunity uh, new zealand has just had a couple of earthquakes in christchurch had a massive earthquake why don't you go to new zealand and help out there Okay, so I said, "Great! I remember what my boss, uh, my CEO, had said. Right, two countries, two brands. Two countries, two brands. Yeah. Right? So I've done two brands now. Yeah. No, one more country is left. Correct. So I said, let me put a check mark on that. Right. Mm. So I went to Auckland, and uh, and I was a GM of um, the Grand Mercure in Auckland um, for two weeks, and then things started to move, and they said. Oh, we are moving people around. We need some help to open. You opened a couple of airport hotels. So why didn't you open No Hotel Auckland Airport? Okay. So the GM had just come from the UK, returned back to New Zealand after a very long time. So I was I facilitated the opening of the No Hotel Auckland Airport. Mm. Was there for about five six months in New Zealand. It's a new country for me again. 
but really enjoyed that whole journey. Um, I came back uh, after that. So after that opening, I came back. I took a month off and um, went out on South Island mm. uh, of New Zealand, rented a Ducati. I'm still not a Ducati. <laughs> That was my first exposure to a Ducati fuel. Okay. Right. So I rented a Ducati motorcycle and went around the South Island. Didn't have any reservations. Just took a sabbatical, enjoyed myself. And then I came back. Um, and then when I came back, I thought, what's next? Uh, the GM, GM ship was too much. You opened up a hotel in international country. Yeah. Done all of this. Yeah. So I've been a GM for, you know, about six years by then. Right? So I thought, now what do I do? Right? What next? The problem is in your... When you're 32 and you've already done that. Yeah. Right? So if you're yeah. 55, then you can say, okay, I'm going to hang my boots. Correct. Yeah, right? Correct. And you've got another 20 years to go. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Right. So, so I thought, let me just experience another brand at that time. So, so I left for Marriott. Uh, okay. As was a GM at Marriott uh, Courtyard in Ahmedabad. It was another new city for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was I did that for about almost a year. Mm-hmm. And then I had ants in my pants and wanted to do a business of my own. Right? Okay. So, yeah. That happens. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that was again a great experience, right? So, I, I teed up with uh, Shobha, which is a, uh, a, a builder that you know. Yeah, yeah right? Shobha builder. Shobha builder. So, very, very successful. But how, how this thought comes in the, to your head that let me go out and do my own business? Because you have done all, you've seen all. That's what the thing that you have to do. <laughs> Even there, I think I was making sales calls and I met with Mr. Menon, who heads, yeah, who was basically in, in Ahmedabad, not in Ahmedabad, I think at the Delhi airport. Okay. Right. So I kept in touch with him and obviously I was selling rooms. Mm. That's the reason I met him. And, um, and then we had a few interactions and everything like that. And he expressed interest in building a hospitality brand. And that's what the business and I thought, wow, I always want to do something of my own. Like how long are you going to continue to work for somebody? You yeah. have to do something for your own. Again, really dumb. Kind of, because I think in life, you're always working for someone. Correct. Right now, I work for my wife and my customers. Yeah. So you're constantly working for somebody, right? So uh, there is, there's never, you're not working for anybody. But I thought at that time, I want to do my own thing. So I went to Dubai. That's where uh, Dubai, uh, Shoba's headquarters were. Yeah. So started to build up Shoba Hospitality. Oh, okay. Right? So a division for them. Our division for them, right? So... We wanted to look at restaurants, uh, got three land parcels in Dubai and wanted to, I tried to, I raised about $26 million uh, with some investors. So it was part of that. So all these new learnings for me. Hmm. There, um, the hotel business for Shobha, uh, we set up a brand called Strada Hotels hmm. um, and registered it in UAE. Um, and then obviously the downturn happened. Uh, in 2013 in Dubai, if you remember. Yeah. So, um, so that took some time away from hospitality and to other uh, ventures Correct. in real estate for yeah. Shoba. So I thought this is a time for me to look out again. So, uh, and I learned, gained a lot, right? Yeah. And uh, my now wife, I met her there in Dubai at that time. All right. So we'll, we'll come to that as well. This is a very interesting story that. So I, uh, I moved back uh and my only two companies were Marriott and Accor, right? Mm. So I reached out to both companies and said, is there an opportunity? I'm open to work. I'm open to work. Uh, and Accor offered me the GM of the Novotel in Jaipur, which is a convention center as well. Just opened recently, right? Mm. But they said at that time, it was opening, are you interested? Uh, and I was thinking about it, you know, uh, because again, been a GM for so many years, right? And so, well, oh, there's another opportunity with Accor Plus. Okay. So I thought, oh, wow, that's interesting because that's hospitality, but a little bit different, right? Correct. Right. So uh, then I had my first interview from Dubai um, and into Sydney, second interview in, in Singapore. And then finally, they flew me down to Sydney for training and everything. And that's how I took that job. So so basically, you don't want it to become a GM again. And no option was because it was the And Accor Plus was the option against being a general manager. You could have become something in Accor Plus and you took it. Yes. Just it because, it's, because it was fascinating. It was a new venture for you. It was something different, right? Yes. Okay. Understood. So you said side in. So that's how, I, that's how I ended up in Accor Plus. So I started as a general manager for India. 
Mm. That was my first role. It's 10 years now. This year will be my 10th year. Uh, all these things expanded. Now I run Malaysia. I'm in charge of moving this business into the Middle East. I manage uh, the BSS business, which is really the GCC part of the business. Correct. Uh, we are across 20 countries. So all of the back-end work of those 20 countries happens here, largely finance, data, IT, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so it's expanded. The business has grown. Uh, obviously, it's very, very closely related to hospitality, owned by a hospitality company, but it's an ancillary business. Mm, of course. Right? So uh, that's how I ended up here. In the last 10 years, I've grown, learned. You know, I'll give you a small example. When we started in Acropolis in India, we had about 13,000 members, one, three. Uh, today, we sit north of 70,000 members. Wow. Well, I mean, this is including the COVID years. Correct. That's how uh, the business has grown. So I've been very fortunate with my team. I've done a fantastic job. Uh, hotels have also grown, right? I started with Alors Plus Hotel. Today we have 63 hotels in India, right? And so there are more coming in. Yes, and much more coming in, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I think, uh, but the business taught me a lot more, right? Because hotels taught me to think within those four row walls. There's mm -hmm. a, this is a box, right? Correct. It's a large box, small box, but it's still a box. Uh, this allowed me to think beyond boundaries, so beyond geographies. Mm -hmm. um, so I sit here and manage Malaysia. I sit here and provide service to Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong. Correct. You know, so all of that. Right? So it allowed me to do a bit of expand geographically sitting here. Mm -hmm. It was a great opportunity for us. So if I know Prashant very well, it's... You've always been in search of new things because you have seen a lot of uh, it in a very early age. So by 32, you were already GM for almost four, five years, six years. What happened to that, Prashant, of 10 years into a core plus? What a core plus has given you that has made you to be here, to enrich what is there in a core plus? Of course, you have got growth. Mm -hmm. uh, you are seeing the more potential of a core plus going up. But I still want to understand how you look at as a core plus, what a core looks at a core plus versus what Prashant looks at a core plus. Uh, so for a core, it's a very, very important business. Uh, you know, approximately uh, 2 million room nights, um, um, about 200 million euros in uh, in revenue. So it's a large, large business. It's itself, it's a company altogether. Yeah, yeah, it's we call it ancillary, but imagine if it is a third party, it will have been a great bigger company, right? So pre-COVID, we were the fourth largest supplier of rooms to Accor hotels. Wow. Uh, Post-COVID, we are the second, right? So oh, you were the second. Yeah. So very, very, very big, right? So um, I mean, I'm talking of the. Booking.com's. Yeah, of course, it uh, is. Uh, if you're number so, two, it's uh, yeah, huge. It's massive, right? So, um, and if may I ask, what is the segment of the customers that goes in? It is more of the corporate, all leisure is mixed together. Um, so, Echo Plus sits more in the SME segment, right? Okay. So, leisure and SME. Okay. And so, yeah. so, we've been fortunate also, Prashant, to be honest, because COVID changed the top COVID. 10 accounts of every hotel company. Correct. Place. Right. Yes. Uh, so if corporate was ruling the roost, that vanished. Okay. And all of a sudden, you had not your top 10, but top 100. Correct. Right. Correct. You're right. So it got fragmented. Right. Correct. So, and Aqua Plus really came into the picture and become a lot more important at that time. Right. And, so, uh, and how people travel also, stays have become longer. Hey. Right. Uh, leisure has become important. Hmm. So it's not leisure, it's not business, it's kind of pleasure, right? Yeah. Uh, work from home has helped. So all of these opportunities have actually helped Aqua Plus mm -hmm. and our members. Okay. Right? So Aqua Plus as a business has grown from 2019 by about 18%, right? So we've lost a lot of members during uh, the COVID, COVID. Years, as you can imagine. We are the second largest Aqua Plus country uh, oh. in the world. So our largest Aqua Plus base sits in Australia, over okay. 150,000 members. Uh, given that we also have 400 hotels in Australia. Yeah. So for the 63 hotels we have in India, we have 70,000 plus members. Wow. Right. So, but I think we're only scratching the surface. Yeah, it's, it's just a start. Yeah, there's a massive opportunity that we've created this community of members who want to get more. And that's the opportunity. And for me, 
personally. So this is for Accor. For me, it's not the same business. Mm. So I feel like I've changed companies maybe four times in these last 10 years. Mm. So you might be able to like have been with Accor Plus. Exactly. Mm. That's, that's what I was, I was coming to. So, you know, when we started here, I had the BSS, the Business Support Services, mm. which didn't report into me at the time. We had six people. Mm. Today we have 160. Okay. So it's chalk and cheese really. Correct. Right? Running the geography of the 13,000 members and 70,000 members. Mm. It's the same. We never had member service. We're actually running a company all together, which is non-hotel, but working in, in, in hotel and domain. Yeah. You know, and also dependent on hotels. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't have a business without Accor Hotels. Of course. Of course. Right? So the only reason I exist is because of Accor Hotels. Yeah. But I don't have hotels. I, yeah. And and you are the one who, who pray every day that the more hotels gets open. Yes. Because that's how your business is going to grow. Yes. And I am here when the more hotels open. I I have more members yeah. to send them. You know, so we're gonna open a Fairmont in Mumbai soon, right? And uh, we have twenty thousand members waiting to go to that hotel, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the opportunity, rate, right? So there's a huge amount of data also that you manage, right? Yes. So you know, over four hundred and twenty thousand members uh, in Asia Pacific. That's we've got, uh, and that number may not be large, Prashant. Hey. But what's large is their activation. You know, we're over 60% active. Hmm. Typical loyalty programs, uh, I'm talking about free to join programs, sit between 8 to 10%. Right? Yeah. So the fact that ACO Plus members are highly active hey. has enriched me because I've learned how to engage with members. Once you engage with members, they automatically become active. Correct. Which is much like how you deal with your heart is. Hmm. We call it our team hardest, right? Correct. So it's the exact same thing. How do you engage with people? Hmm. So you engage with your partners, you engage with your members, you engage with your team, right? And that's really the trick of activating a team. Hmm. Right? So it's really adding value to me because, you know, imagine managing a team of, you know, 30 to 40 people to today managing 250 people. Hmm. Right? The company's not the same. Correct. Every office is doubled in size. Mm -hmm. So this is again, we call it, let's simplify this. A corporate is a loyalty program membership. Uh, do you think is there is there any other membership in the world in hospitality, which is bigger than a corporate? In terms of all aspects, I'm not just talking about the number, the number of revenue or the room that it produces. I'm not talking about, like you said, the engagement ratio, the amount that you have, the percentage that you're growing. So we're very fortunate. I mean, uh, because the metrics to measure mm. loyalty is different. Right? Yeah. So it would not be honest of me to say we are the largest or not the largest. But the best way I can answer your question is this, that we are the only loyalty program which is fully owned and operated internationally. So let me explain. Yeah, please. Uh, so if you look at our comp set, so we have the all program hmm. yeah. and our our competition has Bonvoy or Hilton Honors. Or so we have I, so a lot of general people know all and they know Bonvoy because all these sports, football or cricket or Wimbledon, we are, we are seeing all of these uh, branding happening around. Yes. Uh, we'll come back to this Accor Plus because I've not seen the branding across. But I've seen all and I've seen Bonvoy. And Hilton Plus, I've never seen it anywhere that getting promoted. Okay. So, you know, I know Hilton Honors obviously from my US days. Right? Yeah. Because it's, it's the mother of all loyalty programs. Correct. Actually started that, right? So, um, actually airlines did it better than us. And then yeah. we learned from airlines. Airlines, of all. course. And that's how it happened. Um, but these are loyalty programs. Yeah. I am in a business called Subscription. Mm. Which is a new age business. The Aqua Plus business has existed for about 30 years. Actually, coincidentally... This is a 30th year wow. as, as being a subscription program. Okay. So we are the very first. So if when you call it a subscription, does anyone else have a subscription program? They no. do, but they're not joined with their mother program. So I'll come back to that. So, so you have the all membership program, which you talked about. Yeah. And I'll tell you why we don't advertise it in that sense, right? Because every ACO Plus member is an all member, but an elite all member. Okay. Under that no one else can take. 
Hmm. That's a unique positioning that Accor Plus has. Hmm. Right? So it's literally Accor Plus. Hmm. So you get all membership, but at a elite level. Do you directly go to the elite level? Yeah. yeah. So you start at the silver and you move in your journey okay. from there, right? Correct. All the other loyalty programs have a subscription program, but they're not attached. Hmm. You cannot have an Accor Plus membership without being an all member. Okay. Right? Okay. Whereas it's not true for, let's say, Club Marriott or Bonvoy. They're mm -hmm. not joining together. Correct. Same, Hyatt has a gold passport and there, 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 are, there is a lot of other programs which are... So, so how... High dining club, right? Yeah. But, okay. How do you look at loyalty program as per se, the word which comes as loyalty program? So, imagine we both are not from hospitality, uh, you know, per se, that we are sitting on the top. While we were working, we have already shown the priority passes and all of those were there, which gives you uh, a special attention when you go to check-in or you go to dine. What is loyalty so basically for you? So for me, loyalty is something that I am loyal to this brand, but that doesn't exist at all for me. <laughs> That's what the word says, that I am. if I have an Accor Plus, I, I am a loyalty program member of Accor. But why I am loyal to you? That's that's the important question which always comes in my head when I look at loyalty program. So if the benefit is coming to me, I am going to look at you and I am loyal to you. Benefit is not coming. So how do you work on the benefit part that you claim to say that my loyalty program is best? Because that's that's only that's the only factor that can make a loyalty program a great loyalty program. True. So, Prashant, you have to put your member at the center of this conversation, right? So, the most important thing to understand is that you are never loyal to anything yeah. but your feelings. Yes. Yes. You are loyal to how you feel. Correct. My opportunity is to make you feel a certain way. Uh -huh. And you will be loyal to that feeling. Correct. That's really the opportunity. Correct. Right? So, how, how invested am I? to making you feel a certain way, which you want to feel again and again and again. Correct. That's how I define loyalty. So your definition of loyalty is you're loyal to your certain feelings. If you want to feel important, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to feel like an elite Correct. member, Correct. right? Come to Echo Plus. Okay. So really it's about what is important to you. Mm -hmm. You're only loyal to how you feel. Correct, of course, yeah, that's what the bigger brand, the or the luxury brand does to you. They give you services to the level when once you buy a product, you become a part of a product and they, then that's that's how they become loyal to that uh, brand per se or some you know, luxury. All this luxury brand does that. So, you let people to invest in loyalty program, which means you put in your money and uh, that's how you get a core plus, correct? That's not free. Yes, so you buy into a subscription program, you buy into a piece of Accor. Hmm. Right? Once you become an Accor Plus member, you will, every hotel we open, you will get to experience more at all those hotels, right? So today, our Accor Plus membership program allows you to access, let's say, 1,500 hotels, 800 swimming pools. Oh, okay. Right? About 1,500 restaurants. So let me put this away. So if I'm a car press member and XYZ fees, I gave it to you. I can walk into any hotel and use the swimming pool. So without reserving a room. No, that's not correct. Okay. But so let, let, let me, so what you can do, let me tell you what you yeah. can do. I did tell you what you can't do, right? So as an Aquaplus member, hmm. uh, A, you just download your all app and you have your Aquaplus card there, right? Correct. Sure. Because all Accor is integrated. Um, you can go to the Sofitel in Bombay, hmm. uh, Sofitel in Bangkok, hmm. Sofitel in Beijing, hmm. Sofitel in Brisbane, and you just show your card, and you get a flat fifty percent off if you and your partner are dining. Finished. Wow! The, and you can do that across fifteen hundred hotels, and no questions asked. Absolutely not. That's the power of that. Hmm. Right. So, and I can dine to any restaurant present in the hotel. Yes, any restaurant, right? Okay, right. And as far as I can, Prashant, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the hotel. As many times. So it's a gift that you keep getting. Hmm. So the membership is valid for a year, and you can go enjoy the hotel facilities. Okay. So now some hotels uh, allow you a pool access. So I, I did say that you're not allowed to access any pool, but 
you know, if you buy an Aquaplus membership here in India, there is an ability for you to go to the pool at the Sofit hmm. and the pool in No Hotel Goa. Yeah. So there are opportunities like so that. So there, there, there might be hotels which allow you to access a gym or progress. Okay. Some so sort of club area. See vouchers that come with that, all digital, which you can access at time to time. Hmm. So how do you think the loyalty program as a market is going? So I'll give you an example why, why I'm saying this. Uh, entire thing in this world is now getting fragmented to special niche. So like an automobile, to hospitality, to restaurants, everything is getting to a smaller niche where people are willing to be a part of that growth. And loyalty as such is going to be a big part. Uh, so I'll give you an example. So if you go on a gaming platform today, there are big influencers who do gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, they are coming with their own currencies to utilize, to you know promote, to send, uh, gift anyone. They are using their own loyalty program thing for uh, uh, buying to look at exclusive gaming uh, championship or anything that's happening. Yeah. Same is happening in any other field. Hospitality, mein, do you think a core plus tomorrow can also look at a bigger platform beyond a core? Uh, so that's actually such a great question. You know, when COVID happened, yeah. that's exactly what I looked at. How do I onboard um, non core restaurants? If you yeah, yeah, right. So, so our what members, Michelin has done today that they are now giving a certificate rating. Mm -hmm. So imagine a core plus is something that you know a core how these hotels are. And you 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 find out and say these are the filter restaurants who's gonna be on a car plus tomorrow. I'm not saying that you might not be doing it, uh, but is this going to be the future of loyalty program as well for my car plus? So you got to really be focused on your members. So I come back to member first. Hmm. So our members like to travel. So we have an we have something with Qantas Airlines. Okay, the Qatar Airlines. Uh, we have something with. Uh, Cruise liners. Uh, we have something with Europe car, a car at clean up. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to knowing thyself and also knowing your exactly customer, right? You can't be all things for all people. Hey. Because then you dilute the purpose. Yes. The reason why you exist, right? Yeah. Absolutely your purpose. Uh, very eloquent people. I think that's really important. You got to stick to your core. It's very tempting, Prashant, to do everything for everyone. Yeah. But you've got to really stay focused, right? Mm. So, do I want to do insurance? Maybe not. Correct. All right? I think in life and in business, sometimes it's more important to know what you don't want to do sure. versus what you want to do. It's the most important thing because I'll, I'll put it in a very simpler way. You might have thousand things that you want, mm. uh, but it is simpler to find out that what you don't want. There will be two or three things that I... See, I, I can I can handle anything but not bullshit. That's that's a simple way to put it. Okay, so so that's that's how so Accord Plus I understood that this loyalty program works very well. So it's been thirty years around and it's it's growing. What do you think in next five years this loyalty program market will be? So taking your competition in your head that the this this market is growing or it's gonna be stagnant, or there will be more to come in and see in loyalty program. Okay. So, you know, we, we're sitting about uh, just under half a million members now. Uh, our CEO wants us to be a million members, but I'm pretty sure we'll far exceed that. So that's, and the reason I say that is, I think you nailed it really well, the niche, right? So give a small example. Recently, BMW mm -hmm. in the US introduced subscription for heated seats. Oh, really? So, yeah. So what that means is during winters, you can subscribe for heated seats. And the feature is there, but you can't use it till the time you subscribe. Yes, but that's not the point. The point is you use it when you need it, right? It's yeah. on demand. Yeah. So why would you pay for something when you're not using it? Correct. Correct. So if you're not traveling, I'm sorry, Prashant, then you're not my member. Mm. Because this is for the smart traveler who wants to experience more. Correct. Right. So if you're not a traveler, you don't enjoy hotels and going and seeing in the world, then maybe this program is not for you. And that's important. Very, very important to know. So, 
you guys are very smart to craft out a, such a loyalty program which works very well, has a functionality that people can utilize, and also uh, it is very much focused to customer, which is very, very important when it comes to loyalty programs. I've seen a lot of loyalty programs. I've done a study. Uh, there is one company called TLC which does it for uh, Marriott and other. I, I don't want to name it. Mm. But there are a lot of third-party companies also do it, but they don't get it right. They, they want to do everything, that, like you mentioned it. So there is... The redeem, redemption goes to places where I don't want to redeem it. And uh, you made the, the statement very correct. Airlines have done it very well for us to know that how a loyalty program has to run. And this, my, in my feeling, like you said, that million, I said, I am, I'm, I'm just looking at that why it is going to increase because people are now going to get to a point where they want exactly the need that they are incurring for, that they're growing for. And if the if there is any loyalty program that can go beyond, I think a core plus is there. I just want to understand how you sell it because I don't see there is much of campaign around it. One, because I follow a core across all the platform. I don't see a core plus focus in terms of selling. What is your channel? How you sell this? So it's a great question, right? So there are certain things. I mean, let's pick insurance, for example, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have insurance, yeah, Shantan, you're driving, you can get pulled over. Correct. And you get a fine for it. You know, Correct. they might even take your RC and all of yeah. that stuff. If you don't have an ACO Plus membership, you can live through life. Yeah. And then well up. Yeah. You can live your entire life without an ACO Plus membership. Yeah. Right? That's, not That's fine. Um, and if you want to spend more, uh, then you can go go to travel anywhere in Asia Pacific and not have an ACO Plus membership and spend a lot more. And still yeah. get to travel, right? Get it. So the ACO Plus membership is not a need. Hey. It's not even a want. Hey. It's a desire. Hey. So that desire is to do with human emotion. So everything that we have learned all these 30 years, we are not any scientists or behavioral scientists who understood this. We really listen to our members. Hey. They want to know what they want. Hey. And they will tell you what they want. Right? So it's really, really important that you focus again on the member first mm. and what they want and they will take you there. You just have to follow them. Mm. So when you sell an Acopolis membership, you sell, today I think about 50% of our memberships are still told, sold on the phone. So okay, you call all the all members? Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. So we call them and uh, so with the state of the hotel, how was your stay? Would you like an Acopolis membership? Which is really great, right? So... Uh, and then rest of it is online and partnerships. Okay, understood. So we have a massive deal with uh, Amex, Axis, right? So these high-level uh, H&I customers, when they get their card count or their credit cards, they get an Acopolis membership with that. And so again, partnerships are very, very important for us. Right? Mm. So as we're growing, you know, 50% of the market is online in that space um, and, and partnerships, and the rest of it is telesales right now, I think that's just a change. Yeah. And what's happening in a world now is that it's becoming hybrid. People are calling us. We have an inbound channel now where people are calling us to buy their subscription. Wow. 30% uh, of our sales, Vishant, happen because of reference. Right? Oh, because people enjoy. This is 30%. Yeah, 30%, right? People enjoy the membership so much that they refer other members to us. Right? And that's, and we call them and say, hey, happy birthday. Did you use your cake voucher? Did you use your free night that's loaded onto your car? Mm -hmm. And so we, because we're at our hotels, we want you to use your free night. Yeah. I'm not trying to make breakage out of that. I want you to enjoy this membership. So you come back to me. And that is why I have a, you know, a great renewal rate, if you mm -hmm. Understood. Great. Okay, so let's sum it up to your professional life. Mm -hmm. Wherever you have reached in life mm -hmm. and it is that you have done good for you from a, from a child who was forced to do engineering and MBBS to becoming a tailor. And now, of course, I'm very sure that your family, friends, peer will be proud that you, what you have achieved. Mere liye to ek simple line that you, you left everything on the fate of people who are around you and God and you gave your 100% and devotion. Yaar, meko ye mila, meko karna hai. I, as I mentioned, there was there will be a time when you start to take a string on your hand and you did that because you said, enough, I want to do more. You left with no option, went to do a business, came back, started it again. 
and you landed up again with the fate and destiny that Accord Plus had the vacancy. Imagine, sir, just to give you a prospective to this. Accord Plus नहीं होता तो क्या होता? Accord Plus नहीं होता तो GM. I don't know much. I would have taken the GM role for sure mm-hmm. at no hotel, uh, but I would have stayed there. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm hungry. Uh, and hungry to grow, hungry to learn more. Um, I would have diversified for sure. So, yeah, my, my, so, so my question is, who is Prashant without any designation? Yeah, so, so you know, people ask me, what would you do if you're not a hotel leader? I would have been a race car driver. I love speed, right? So, uh, I'm a biker. Um, and I have a small Ducati, which I ride around town and uh, take uh, her to the BIC. Um, I name all my vehicles. Um, so, my bike's called Delilah. Wow. Uh, nice name. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, I'll keep it forever because uh, my wife and I went on a date on that bike. That's how we met. And uh, and I enjoy I enjoy the freedom that a bike gives you. Like, it's, um, it's not like watching a movie. It's like being in the movie. Yeah. You must have heard that. Right? But, it's about paying attention to details. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm in my car, I can I can forget many things, right? I can zone out. I can listen to your podcast. I can do all of that. I can on the bike, but it's not the same, right? Yeah. You're exposed to the horns, the dust, um, every small bump on the road. Yeah. Um, you got to plan ahead. You got to think of yourself as a little bu- 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 bubble, right? Yeah. Because if you don't do all those things, Prashant. Uh, the bike lets you know, yeah. right? Um, and I think caring for those details, that's Prashant. Good. Uh, nah. Very nicely explained, sir. And what you accomplish yourself as a hotel leader, so let's let's leave a car and all your job. What has hospitality given to you? This Everything that I've got. Everything. Give me the uh, your definition of being a hospitality professional and hotelier. It's made me a better human being. Right? I'm really grateful to this industry. Um, when I said it's given me everything, I literally mean that. My ability to communicate. I couldn't speak English properly. Shant, when I went to the US. It's this language I'm talking to you in was given to me by this industry. The ability to relate to you is given to me by this industry. The ability to manage my life and my network is given to me by this industry. Um, so I can't be anything but grateful because it's paid me, trained me, and made me who I am. So, you know why I've asked this question? Har industry na ek insaan ko kuch banati hai. Har industry. And this answer of yours is common to all the people who have been in this industry. And I will tell you this, few quotes from all of um, my old part podcast uh, Karan said that hospitality for me is lifestyle mm. and there are people who said that once a hotelier is always a hotelier it's not because that you do a job and you continue working mm. there are people who are the way that they are in the hotels they will go back to the home they will be same level of hospitality you will see there uh, that they're doing it and uh, why I like this industry and why you will like this industry is Apart from a lot of knowledge that you can gain from any other industry, be it tech, automobile, any other industry allies, the kind of person that you become being in this industry is unparalleled to any other industry in the world that you work in. And this is something which I love in this industry because as you said, I podcast to do a I cannot sit with the people and talk for one hour that who I met first time. Yes. And this has been taught by this industry. I'm a computer science graduate. Sitting on a computer can can be a very, very fruitful for me where can I can produce a lot of money and I can do a lot of action. I can be a very productive person. But sitting with you, I can be a person who can gain a lot of wisdom, understand the perspective of life, looking at through different people lens. And this is what industry has taught me. And this is my uh, validation or point to give you that what you've said is right. I have kind. missed your uh, personal, I've missed a lot of things here. And I missed it for purpose because we have a time constraint because people cannot sit down and look at us for two hours. Uh, we will do another podcast where we'll touch the life, uh, 
that you have beyond the professionalism. Okay. I just want to give me one line or two paragraph or one or two sentence how your personal life is, you being in hospitality. Just keep it short so yeah, that we can have uh, another uh, pick up from for another podcast. Um, so I have a mission statement if I may share. Yeah, yeah. So it covers all, encompasses all parts of my life uh -huh. and definitely personal. So I want to make the greatest difference in the shortest time to the most amount of people. Wow. So the greatest difference in the shortest time to the most amount of people. And that is my personal and my professional life. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Just one advice you want to give to anyone. And this is cliche question that I asked mm -hmm. to anyone who is into hospitality, trying to do business or trying to climb up the ladder. Uh, what should they do? Although the gist I've already told, be devotion, devotion to your work. Is there anything that you want to specifically tell anyone who is into industry? So my mom sent me something recently and I'll mention that. All right. So it's, it stuck with me. And it's patience, right? It's a very simple word. Yeah. But patience, Prashant, is not about waiting for the right thing. But having the right attitude while you're waiting for it. Wow. And so because waiting for the right thing, you have no choice in the matter. But your attitude while you wait for it, I think is very important. It's a, it's a good way to put it across. Patience said easily done. It's a very difficult way to learn how to be patient. And for every one of us, patience to come to become someone just keep us patience. It also takes a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, true, true that. So on this note, I will end this conversation here. And I will leave it open for next series sit down. Maybe, maybe somewhere around this, this entire core world or sure. your world. Wherever it takes us. Thank, Thank you so much. much. You are watching Biggest Hospitality Podcast by a Hotelier. Stay tuned. Follow us for more.